In this demonstration, we're going to see how to model a scissor lift using Simscape Multibody. This scissor lift has a large number of parts. We wish to shorten the time it takes to create a parameterized model of this lift. We're going to use components created in Simscape Multibody to rapidly assemble this model. The library of parts that we have makes it easy to assemble the first link. We can make a copy of this to create half of a stage of our scissor lift. We can then copy this scissor mechanism to create a full stage and then copy this stage to create the second stage. The parameterized parts in Simscape Multibody make it very quick and easy to assemble this complex system. I'll now switch over to the model so you can see how this is done. Here is the library of parameterized elements, parts, and mechanisms that we will use to assemble our scissor lift. We'll start by creating a new Simulink model using the command smnew. smnew opens a new Simulink model with all of the blocks that we need to start building a system in Simscape Multibody. The first thing that we need is one of the blocks. I'll click to create a line and type in base to get one of the base blocks. When I update the diagram, we can see a visualization of this element. I'm going to adjust the view convention to have Y be in the up direction and I'll set the background to be white. The next component that we need is one of the links that will be half of the scissor lift mechanism. So I'll click and drag to create a line and type in link. We can select link with three holes from our library. We'll set the length to be 240 centimeters. Now when I update the diagram, we can see that we have two parts, the base block and the link with three holes. If I run the simulation, we'll see that nothing happens. That's because these two parts are rigidly connected together by this line. To let them move, we need to add a degree of freedom, so I will add a revolute joint which will allow the link to rotate with respect to the base block. When I run the simulation now, still nothing happens. That's because gravity is acting along the Z direction, and we need it to act in the Y direction. We'll go into the mechanism configuration block, go to the field where gravity is defined, and set it to be a vector with gravity acting in the minus Y direction. Now when we run the simulation, the link rotates and swings like a pendulum. We need two links for our scissor mechanism, so I'll make a copy of this one and connect them at their centers. If I update the diagram, we'll see that the link has been added, but it's right on top of the other one. They're connected at the exact same frame. To separate the two, we need a shaft. So I'll type in shaft and get it from the library that I've defined. I'll add it here, update the diagram, and we'll see that the two are separated by this small shaft. We'll change the color of the second link that we added so that it is different and we can distinguish it from the first one. If I run the simulation now, we can see that they swing like a pendulum, both of them rigidly connected together by this shaft. We'll add a degree of freedom to allow them to rotate by copying and pasting the revolute joint. Now when I run the simulation, we can see that the second link can pivot with respect to the first one. This end of the second link needs to slide along the cart of our scissor lift. To do that, to make that happen, we're going to add a roller block. So I will pick a base roller and attach it here. Now when I update the diagram, we can see that a roller has been added to the other end. This roller needs to slide in a track on the bottom of the cart. To make sure that it stays along that track, we'll add a prismatic joint. This will allow a single translational degree of freedom along the base of the cart. We need to define the location of the track that that goes in, so we will use a rigid transform block to define the axis along which the roller can slide. We need to define the orientation and location of this track. So we're going to rotate it about the y-axis by 90 degrees. That will take the z-axis and point it along the line of this, of, this, of this link. We also need to offset it by the distance, the separation of these two links. So we'll separate that. We will set this to be 10 centimeters, the length of a shaft, along the minus Z axis. The roller needs to rotate with respect to this link, so we'll make another copy of the revolute joint and put it here. Now when I run the simulation, we'll see that the roller slides along the bottom of the track. Instead of having it swing just due to gravity, I'm going to add a spring, a preloaded spring at this joint to make it extend upwards. I'll come into this revolute joint and expand the internal mechanics. I'll set the equilibrium position of the spring damper to 45 degrees and set the stiffness and damping accordingly. 
Now when I run the simulation, we can see that the scissor mechanism extends upwards, which is what we were looking for. This is one half of the linkage that we need to create for a single stage. I'm going to make a, I'm going to pack these components into a subsystem to make them easier to reuse. Now when I go into the subsystem, we can see the system that we put together, and there are a few points for the interface to the rest of the mechanism. These are for the linkages at the front, so I will label these ports rear and front, or R and F, and this is connection to the world frame, so I'll label it W. Now I'm going to make a copy of this and place it here. We need to define how far apart these two are, so I will use a rigid transform to separate them, and we will set the two of these to be separated by a distance of one meter. So I'll come into translation and set it to be one meter along the positive z-axis. Now when I update the diagram, we'll see that we have two of these mechanisms. These two mechanisms are exactly the same, but in our scissor lift, they need to be mirror images of each other. So I'll go into the second one that we created and adjust a few of the parameters to make it a mirror image of the first mechanism that we created, changing things from plus z, a minus z, to plus z. Now when I update the diagram, we can see that we have mirror images of each other. The last thing that we'll do is connect these two halves of the stage with, by adding shafts at the front and rear. So if I go back up to this level, we need to add a shaft between this connection and the other connection. So I'll insert another shaft block from my library. For the front, I'm going to set it to a length of 120 centimeters. This is the length, the separation of the two stages. This is the separation of the two stages plus the two shafts that separate the two linkages. We'll make another copy, connect it here for the rear, and we'll set this to be 100 centimeters, the separation we defined in the beginning. Now when I run the simulation, we can see that the shafts are connected together. We have a full stage of our scissor lift mechanism. I'll now shift over to a completed model where you can see all of the stages of our scissor lift. Here you can see the scissor lift with all three stages. These stages were assembled much like we saw before. We have our scissor lift, which has been parameterized so that you can set the geometry parameters and whether it's on the left or right side. And underneath you can see the elemental components that we saw in the original library. In this demonstration, we have seen how to assemble a scissor lift using components in Simscape Multibody.